Well, hello, friends, and welcome back to Commute Talk. My voice keeps cracking today, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make it through one of these, but we'll see how it goes. So, um, Niffle 101 writes in, asking about uh, object-oriented programming and um, if uh, performance is uh, such a goal for Serenity or a focus area, then how come I'm using object-oriented programming and uh, and not data-oriented programming? And then he, he linked some, some talks. So I listened to the talk by Mike Acton in the car yesterday, and it was kind of interesting, so thank you for sending that. Um, so Mike Acton is a games industry <coughs> C++ veteran who has a, has a fair, fair number of games under his belt. So he clearly, he clearly knows what he's talking about. And he talks at length about um, organizing your programs around data locality, basically, or organizing around data instead of organizing around your mental model of the program. And I think that makes perfect sense in the game's problem space. Um, because I've never worked on a game engine, but, but I understood from his talk that for the problems and constraints that, that he's working within, um, his methodology of programming, of course, makes perfect sense. <coughs> um, now, the main, the main differences that I see to, to what I do uh, is that, number one, I don't have a one-year shipping um, like hard uh, deadline. Um, and I think that that's something that you have to you have to keep in mind when when you listen to a talk like this. Like this guy, he has to ship within a year, <clears throat> so he comes at it from a very different angle than most people. Um, and then um, with games, um, he's uh, he's working with huge amounts of, of data that's like often like very <laughs> uniform data. There's like lots and lots of um, objects and he wants to like visit all of them and do the same thing to all of them or inspect all of them somehow and I mean that's that's kind of uh, uh, it sounds generic but <clears throat> uh, but the access patterns that he talks about they, they sound very uh, repetitive and um, it makes perfect sense that they would be memory bound um, and that you could gain a lot of performance by improving the um, cache hit rate um, and I think I think that there's a there's a, a fair amount of interesting things to learn from what he was talking about, and and I certainly this is definitely something that I um, care about, and I would I would try to apply where it makes sense. But um, as I see it, the main benefit of object orientation is precisely that you um, you sort of codify your mental model of the program into the into the program because that makes the program maintainable for far longer than a year. Um, like, I'm writing software that I want to keep working on for the next 30, 40, 50, 60 years, right? So to me, it doesn't make sense to organize my code around um, like data locality so that I can get good performance on the current generation consoles. And and I, I, don't, I don't mean to... Um, be dismissive of, of what he's talking about because I think it makes absolute perfect sense for his problem space. But I can also tell that Mike has been in the same problem space for a long time. And uh, that happens to all of us. Like when we are stuck in a problem space for a long, long time, like I was in the web browser problem space for a long time and <clears throat> it made me uh, build up this, this reality around uh, my way of thinking that was uh, constrained by uh, things I knew to be true because I had verified them over and over and over again within that problem space. Um, but I think you can you can see in the video at the end where he does a Q and A, and then someone asks him. Someone comes up and asks him um, that, "Hey, I work in uh, business application development, and uh, I don't really have these problems that you do. So, um, uh, like." Uh, and, but but uh, I don't remember exactly what the question is, but that, that's the first part that he says. And then uh, the speaker immediately is just unable to relate to him. He just says, like, well, if I were in your shoes, I would still think the way that I do. Um, and, and there's that, um, <laughs> there's that like, dogmatic problem space constrained thinking. Um, and I, I've been so guilty of that, too. But the, the reality is that when you move between different problem spaces, 
then you have to accept that some things don't translate between them. So <clears throat> if you, something that makes sense in games programming uh, and makes sense to, to organize your thinking around that being an invariant or a truth, just an absolute truth, um, you can't take that with you to, um, to other types of programming. You have to, you have to like very retest your assumptions, I guess. So uh, I will say that uh, when I worked on WebKit, then we did many, many, many experiments uh, organizing various parts of the engine around data locality. Um, we had various data structures that were kind of disjoint in RAM, and uh, we tried uh, putting them next to each other. <coughs> and in the vast majority of cases, this had basically no uh, measurable Im uh, impact, even though, uh, I mean, we could, we could measure that the cache locality uh, improved and that the hit rate improved, but our prog pro it turned out that our programs were not memory bound in the first place. Um, because we were just not accessing that extreme amount of data that you would see in a game. <coughs> um, so I guess that's, that's what I would say about that. Uh, and also I feel that uh, one of the main benefits of object-oriented programming is um, that it, it's, um, it remains, I mean, I guess I, guess I already said this, but it, it keeps the code hackable uh, and reusable. Uh, you're not it, you're not binding yourself to whatever data you were modeling um, the object around in the beginning. <clears throat> so like if the data changes, then your object model can often stay the same. Whereas if you've organized all of your code and all of your thinking around the data, then the moment the data changes or you get some additional data or you lose the ability to get some data, then you have to rethink everything. And that's fine if you're shipping a new product every year <clears throat> uh, because then then it doesn't matter right but like if I'm if I'm shipping if I'm making the same product year after year then I care about maintaining my object model and, and um, uh, anyways um, uh, but so I, I think that that what he talks about it makes sense but but is an optimization technique it's not um, it's not a dogmatic principle to organize your programming around for me um, and <clears throat> and people should I mean people should verify for themselves what is what are the best principles to organize your programming around what are the truths in your problem space um, <clears throat> so I don't know but I, I still like to talk and I enjoyed it uh, <laughs> and uh, I recognize the way that he talks because I've listened to people like that, and this is the kind of talk that turns young, uh, inexperienced programmers into uh, dogmatic warriors. And uh, <clears throat> you can see this very often with uh, people who talk about new, <clears throat> new languages that supposedly solve all the problems of old languages. <laughs> uh, they just get so convinced because some really convincing guy got up on stage and, and talked to them about it. Um, but I would I would just uh, challenge everyone to go out and uh, and verify their assumptions and, and verify um, that the way that you think things should be done it's actually better than the way um, it might be done differently and an easier way. <clears throat> of course, if you find data oriented programming easier, then don't let me stop you. But most people would probably say that organizing your code around your mental model of the program is easier more maintainable and um, more pleasant. So I don't know. Uh, but performance is a main concern of Serenity. Um, of course, at the moment, performance is not the primary concern because the primary concern is just building up the system. Uh, and then after we build it up, the more we build it up, the more we measure things and we measure what's actually slowing things down, and then we fix those things by doing targeted optimizations. And, um, and some of those targeted optimizations might be organizing some code around the data, but they will be targeted. It won't be um, like a wholesale principle um, thing. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm, I'm losing my voice here, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> stop talking. but. Uh, I guess I would say thank you for, for the question. It was, it was very interesting, and, and thank you very much for the talk. Uh, I still 
definitely recommend people check it out because it's it's very interesting. So I'll link it below. Um, and other than that, I'll say thank you for hanging out with me on the commute. And <laughs> I will see you guys next time. Bye.